Hey guys, Jeffrey from Headstrong Training Systems here. So today we're going to be taking a look at the deadlift and in particular we're going to be addressing an issue that occurs during the hinge which is essentially upper back rounding. So when we take a look at the hinge, the hinge as you guys should be well aware of now is basically the movement that's going to get us from this standing position down into this bottom position. Now the issue that I want to address is what happens when an upper back rounding occurs in the deadlift and we see it most often in the cases where the initial break is done beautifully. So we've performed the initial break, um, we've loaded into the hips back, we've kept the knees neutral and now from here I'm in this great position where my torso, you can already kind of see that my torso and my armpit center of mass is already set of the Bible and if I was to continue loading down into that trajectory, it would get me down into a great bottom position. Now, the issue that arises is that once people get into this position, they start to hinge down and then see this rounding, this rounding will occur when they, this upper back becomes rounded when they during that last phase of that hinge. And there's two main reasons that this will occur. Firstly, it could simply be a rush. It could be because the athlete, they've come on to, they've got a lot of weight in the bar and there's, there's this association of speed during the setup with a faster lift. Now that is true in some cases where we they try to we try to recruit a stretch reflex, which I'll go that's a topic a completely different topic. But in most instances, a faster setup does not equate a faster lift, but rather an, an efficient, stable, and optimized setup will equal an efficient movement. So because that they're coming into this position, they're trying to rush and they're trying they reach for the bar prematurely and they put themselves into a rounded position. So all if that's the case with you, and then simply all you have to do is greater focus. All you have to do is focus on not reaching for the bar prematurely, but to continuously load into the midfoot, letting the knees travel, you get yourself in that bottom position and keep that torso in neutral. So that's the first camp of people. The second camp of people, the issue will occur due to an error in their hinge, where they actually run out of room um, with the knees and the shins and they hit the bar. So what's happening is due to whatever issue in that hinge, which there's uh, could be a lot of variables, but basically they come down into this bottom position where from here, their shins have already reached the bar. The shins have hit the bar and my hands, they're still far away. They haven't reached the bar. And so in order to keep going down without over wedging and continuing to, continuing to push my shins through because that will shift the barbell away. The only thing they can do from here is to round the back to grab, to reach onto the bar. So you can see that that issue arises from a lack of an issue occurring during the wedge where there's a lack of space, most likely due to their feet being placed too close to the bar and they run out of room with the hinge, or it could also be that they haven't hinged correctly and they haven't created enough room for the knees to travel. And so they, they've then had to reach down with the, and round the upper back in order to get into that position. So those are two common errors that um, are associated with the upper back rounding during the hinge with the setup of the deadlift. And we know that the position that you start in is the position that's going to continue during the lift and it's going to accentuate during the lift. So that's why it's an issue we're going to address. Now, simple cueing to take care of our torso positioning is simply, I want when you're in that hinge position, you firstly, you've hinged back to so you get your torso into the correct position and now you've got neutrality in your spine you want to maintain this angle. The chest and the hips, you want to think about, you've got a maintained torso angle, and as you're loading down, you're loading into your hip crease. You're going to bend and, and perform hip flexion to load down into that midfoot, letting the knees travel naturally, and all at this time, you're, the torso angle is not changing. You're maintaining the angle that you're, that you're loading down into in order to sort of reach that bottom position, so you're maintaining neutrality at all times. So that's all from me today, guys. Hopefully that's helpful for you, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.